Hello there, ladies and gents. This is Mr. Dickin here. Today we're going to be talking about arithmetic series. So we've already discussed sequences. A sequence is just a list of numbers that have some sort of discernible pattern, hopefully. Uh, a series is when we're going to take the sum of those terms. So a series is when we are going to be adding up all of the individual terms of a sequence. There's two types. There's a finite, which means it has a limited number. So the big thing here is that there's a last term. It has a definitive stopping point or an end. Infinite series go on forever. Uh, we won't really be seeing a whole heck of a lot of these in this course. However, later on in your math lives and your math careers, these will become huge, uh, especially when you hit calculus and calc two. So let's take a look at the formula. By the way, if you need to pause the video, I would strongly suggest doing so now. So the summation formula for a finite series, again, finite meaning we know where it ends, is given as this. The sum of the first n terms equals however many terms over 2 times the quantity of the first term plus the last term. So first term and last term are given here as a1 and a sub n. Now, assuming we don't necessarily start with the first term, then you're going to assume that a sub 1, you're going to be, you're going to assume that that becomes the first term of the sum. So we'll see that later on when we get into summation notation. All right. So first example, and you guys have this as a printout if you wanted to follow along. The sum of the even integers from 2 to 100. So that sequence would be 2, 4, 6, 8, blah, 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 all the way up to 100. Well, there are 50 terms total in that sequence. So I'm trying to find the sum of the first 50 terms. Well, if I'm the sum of the first 50 terms, I have to take 50 over 2 times my first term. 2 plus my last term, 100, and from here I can go straight to my calculator. So 50 over 2, I'm going to do that mentally, I know that that's 25, uh, times 2 plus 100, again I can do that mentally, 102. So 2,550 would be our sum for that. Next example, very similar. We want the sum of this infinite arithmetic series. Well, let's see, 4, 9, 14. So it looks like we're counting up by 5 each time. And I can't really figure out how many terms there are, right? So that's, that's an a sub n, but I don't really know how many terms there are. I could go backwards and actually count it out, but that's a lot of work and a lot of time, and I don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to use our good old-fashioned arithmetic formula friend. So this is the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. I know that the last term here was 99. I know I started with my first term was 4. I have no idea ooh, what n was, so plus n minus 1. But I do know that the difference here was 5. So I could distribute the 5 in there. Actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we'll have 4 plus, this would be 5n minus 5. So I'm just going to call it 5n minus 1 if I combine like terms. Add 1 to the other side, divide by 5. We're going to get n equals 20. So 99 is actually the 20th term here. So I'm trying to find the sum of the first 20 terms. So that would be 20 over 2 times my first term, 4 plus my last term, 99. In the calculator, I've got 20 over 2. Let me move this out of the way. 20 over 2, I can do that mentally. That's 10. 4 plus 99, well, that's just 103. So 1,030 would be our final result there. 1,030. And that, again, is the sum if I were to add all those values together. And if you don't believe me, you could double check. It might take you a few minutes, but you could do it. All right, next. We have the sum of the first 150 terms. All right, sweet. So what they've done here is they've given me an n value. My n value is 150. 
I know my first term is 5, but the problem here is I don't know my 150th term. So we have to figure that out first, and then we can go to our formula for the sum of the first 150 terms is going to be 150 over 2 times 5 plus, well, whatever the 150th term was. I don't really know yet. So let's figure this out. Um, to go from 5 to 16, 16 to 27, 27 to 38, it looks like my difference here is 11. So if my first term was 5 and my common difference was 11, I can plug everything I know into the arithmetic explicit formula. Uh, if I distributed that n, or sorry, the 11 into the n and the minus 1, I'm going to get the explicit formula of a sub n equals, this would be 11n minus 6. And again, that's just from distribution and combining like terms. So then to plug in 150, if I want the 150th term, that would just be 11 times 150 minus 6. And if we do that, we would get 1,644. So that is the value that we're plugging into here, 1,644. And now we can go straight to our calculator. Uh, this one, maybe we're a little less comfortable on the calculator. So if I did 150 divided by 2, I'm going to lock that in parentheses so my calculator knows that this is one separate entity, times 5 plus 1644. We should be getting 123,000. 675. Quite a gargantuan number. Wow. So again, that was 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 5. So that would be the sum of the first 150 terms of that sequence, aka the series. Again, series equates to sum. All right, so now let's get into some more convoluted problems, and then we're going to get into summation notation, then we're going to call it a day. All right. So here they give us a formula. We want to find the sum of the first eight terms. They give us the formula. We want the sum of the first eight terms. Well, if I figure out a sub 1, where we start, and then a sub 8, where we end, this is going to be as easy as pi. Because the sum of the first eight terms is going to equal 8 over 2 plus, times the quantity, first term plus last term. So if I plugged in 1 to figure out the, the first term, 2 times 1 is 4 plus 1, that gives me 5. So this would be a 5. Uh, a sub 8, 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 gives me 17. So 5 plus 17 here. 8 over 2 out here, that's going to equal the sum of the first 8 terms. Go to your calculator and call it a day. All right, next. Determine the capacity of an auditorium with, let's see, 30 rows of seats. Okay, so this is going to be important. 30 rows. And it says we have 20 seats in the first row, 24 in the second, 28 in the third, blah, blah, blah. So we've got, they're giving us a pattern here of 20, 24, uh, 28. It looks like we're jumping up by four each time. And we want to figure out all the way to the 30th term, aka the 30th row, what would that sum be? All right, so the sum of the first 30 rows equals, that would be 30 over 2, or 15. Our A1 value, our first term, in this case it's 20, plus our A sub 30 term. Well, shoot, I don't know how many seats are in the 30th row. So this is where we go to our explicit formula for the arithmetic sequence. We know our first term here was 20. We know the difference is going to be 4. We're counting up by 4. If I distribute, combine like terms, my explicit formula will state... 4n plus 16. So if I want the 30th row, 4 times 30 is 120. 
plus 16 yields 136. And now this thing is calculator friendly. We should be getting, by the way, if we do this, uh, 2,340 seats in this auditorium. All right, and now we're going to get into our last and final section. Another way you guys might see these problems worded is summa summation notation in which we use a capital sigma. Capital sigma is a Greek letter indicating sums. Now, with this, they're giving us the formula here of 3n minus 2. That's basically my explicit formula. So a sub n equals this. If I wanted the first term, I'd plug in a 1. If I wanted the third term, I'd plug in a 3, so on and so on. The index values on your sigma will tell you what term are you starting at, what term are you ending at. So what term are you starting and what term are you ending? The actual number of terms, and this is where it's going to get a little convoluted and weird, is going to be the upper limit minus the lower limit and then add 1. So in this case, 20 minus 1 plus 1. This little plus 1 here will always ring true. And the reason for that is if I start counting at 1, that first term is included. Right? If I wanted the first five terms, I start counting at 5, that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have five total terms. That first term is included. If you did straight subtraction, that would get uh, eliminated. So we're going to see two examples, and we'll call it quits because this video is getting a little too long for my liking. All right, here we go. First one. Uh, let's see. The number of terms is going to be 70 minus 1 plus 1. So there are 70 total terms. I need to know what is A sub 1. I need to know what is A sub 70. What is A sub 1? What is A sub 70? Well, to find A sub 1, plug 1 in for N. You would get 2. To find A sub 70, plug 70 in for N. 5 times 70 is 350, minus, four, or sorry, minus 3 is 347. This goes straight to our formula now for the summation. The sum of the first 70 values is going to be 70 over 2 times the quantity 2 plus 347. That goes into the calculator, and we should get 1,000, or sorry, 12,000. 215. Next up is going to be a little bit more dicey. We are going from the fifth term to the 75th term. Now, a lot of you might intuitively think that we are going to be adding together 70 terms. Well, that's not the case, because remember, if it was just straight subtraction, this should not have been 70 up here. This would have been 69 terms. It's going to be very similar down here. So n is going to be the upper limit minus the lower limit, but then we have to add 1 because it's inclusive. That first term that we're including in our set is included here. So if I did that arithmetic, I'd actually have 71 terms. 71 terms. And for this, I need to go from my starting value, in this case 5, I need the fifth term, and I need my upper limit, the 75th term. Fortunately enough for us, they've already given us the explicit formula, so that saves me some time as far as math goes and trying to figure that out. Uh, the fifth term, if I plugged in 5 for n, that would be negative 20 plus 32. That's going to be 12. If I were to plug in 75, uh, negative 4 times 75 is a really big negative number, plus 32 is going to remain a pretty big negative number. It's going to be negative 200, oops, negative 268. And now we go to our formula. 71 over 2, because remember we had 71 terms, times quantity 12 plus a negative. Well, that's the same as a minus. Plus a negative is the same as a minus here. So the sum of all of these terms is going to be negative 9,088. All right, I apologize for the length of this video, but hopefully it was informative. As always, if you are hesitating to understand anything, please, 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 please reach out for help. Send me an email, and we'll get that clarified ASAP. Good luck. Have fun. Be safe. Roll Tide.